Bournes is a happy place to be right now. When we win, you wouldn't believe the atmosphere around West Bromwich. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. When things go well, we sing the Lord is my shepherd. Pastures green, he leadeth waters by. A come-from-behind win on Saturday propelled the Baggies to 40 points, the conventional benchmark for maintaining one's Premier League status. But security has the tendency to breed complacency, an inclination Darren Fletcher intends to avoid. 40 points is great because it is the, it's the first target every season for, for the team, for the club, and, but we don't want it that to be the be-all and end-all in the season. You know, I've been reading snippets in the press and people have said that, you know, I've heard comments, oh, that's West Brom season's done now, which is very disrespectful, but it's up to go, us to go out there and prove them wrong and to, to make them realise that that's not what the club's about anymore. You're not still here, are you? Coming here today, I've driven up from the south coast this morning. We try and give the lads an extra couple of hours in bed on a Monday sometimes if we think it's necessary. Monday's usually more of a loosener for the 11 who've played, but the, the ones who haven't played will do a lot more. Ah, oh, Big Swede's gone on the weights, isn't he, Luke? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you take your top off like you usually do? Two and a half years that I've been here, the, the one thing I've tried to change is the fact that you have to bring good characters in, not just good footballers. If you can, try and bring yourself up to that full standard. Yeah, we'll do gym work and then we'll go outside for a bit and uh, do some stuff on the grass. Still recovering, but starting to look forward to the next game. <laughs> I've not mentioned it yet. He's, uh, he's a tough guy. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the work that he does for our team is incredible. He does get a bit frustrated that he's doing all the work and maybe not getting a, as many as, uh, as he would like. At West Brom, post-match recovery is approached holistically. It's a successful strategy which affords them one of the lowest injury rates in the Premier League. But for those injured, modern technologies are available to accelerate the recovery process. One of those offerings is the aquatic treadmill, utilised today by Matt Phillips. I've got a hamstring injury, so you know it's just getting a, getting a range back, um, doing a few different exercises. This is the start of the second week. Gradually getting better. I'm um, getting more and more range every day, so hopefully it can continue like this. There's less stress travelling through the muscle itself, which is less body weight. So it just allows us to start the process a lot sooner rather than having to wait for it to be able to take the stress on land. So that extra couple of days buys us, you know, potentially a week at the other end. Cold. Cold. <laughs> We do two things a little bit different to everyone else. We work very much as a team, not as individual departments, so you know, we're, we're very integrated. And secondly, I think probably what defines us is we have a really big emphasis on preventative strength, uh, and that's you know, something we've learned puts us in really good shape to keep our injury rate down. We had 24 hours where he's done very little, so we can, he can do a little bit of light exercise today, and hopefully, if things go well, he'll be available for some action on Saturday. Player availability isn't the only focus for Tony Pulis. The modern-day manager's responsibilities extend far beyond the field of play. Yeah, okay. so, yeah, yeah, really good, thanks. Good. Cheers, cheers for doing this. No Appreciate problems. It. You have to do, certainly today, you know, more media work than you've ever done before. You know, it's part and parcel of the Premier League, it's part and parcel of your job. There's so many different pods that surround managing. You know, you have to deal with the press, the media, social media. When I was younger, I just dealt with a secretary and a chairman. That was the only two people I ever dealt with. You know, managing upwards now is a very, very important part of the job. All the players obviously wear GPS units each day for training, which you'll see sit between the shoulder blades on the back. Um, and that unit will work with a heart rate monitor, which they wear across the chest. Mondays and Fridays, which are our lower days, we don't look at live, but Tuesdays and Thursdays, where the players work quite hard, um, they're monitored live during their sessions. Uh, try and keep a balance between making sure the players are fit and ready to go on a Saturday, and then obviously making sure they don't do too, too much and are fatigued when they're going into those games. The manager will look at the figures from, from each session at the end of the day, um, so work feedback back into him. The manager is old school in a lot of ways, but he does use a lot of this modern technology that people don't realise that you know he's very clued up on, and, 
and he uses all this data and, he, and he, the combination of his eye and the stats to back up go a long way. Technology is also used to prepare for upcoming matches. A team of performance analysts spend weeks studying film on future opponents and share their findings with the coaching staff. Our job as the analyst to build a profile on the players, uh, teams that we're going to be playing against. Yeah, just pause it there. Put the players in the right positions. OK, we'll put that one down as a good one, yeah? We start two weeks in advance and we build an idea of how they're going to play initially. And then from that point on, we build a game plan as to how we think we could try and beat them or how we could exploit their weaknesses. With this, we then take that to the manager. and It's just basically giving him a bank of information about the opposition. In terms of putting it all together, it'll probably take us from Monday until Thursday before the meeting's actually complete and in a, in a format ready to present to the players. They'll get their own clips sent to their phone um, on an app about the opposition. It's hours and hours of just watching footage and videos and, and, and breaking it down and, you know, they see a five-minute clip on their phone and, but the effort that's gone into that five minutes goes a long way and it's a big part of our success. Crystal Palace is James Ryder's final assignment at West Brom and the players take a moment to acknowledge his contribution. Quick presentation here for Jimmy, as you know, seven years here. Today's my last day. I'll be going off to the FA um, as men's senior analyst. It's a bit unexpected, but it was nice. It's nice to be appreciated by the players. Next up, preparations for Crystal Palace intensify. We think that maybe Palace may come and create a low block, try and nullify us and defend. And if you can paint pictures to the boys now, it gives them that ideas and it replicates it for the situation that may occur on, a, on Saturday. The town of West Bromwich is located four miles northwest of Birmingham, England's second city and the centre of the Industrial Revolution. Known as the Black Country, the region was named for the soot that emanated from the industrial era chimneys darkening the sky. West Brom looks decidedly different today, but efforts to preserve the past live on. We're in Dudley, which is the heart of the Black Country, and we're in the Black Country Living Museum. We've taken famous buildings and houses and shops and brought them onto this site so that people can experience life in the past. We are synonymous with the black country. We're loyal, we stick together. When we support a team, we don't change our team. At West Bromwich, that's a beacon. It's like a religion, isn't it? It's a small town, West Bromwich, and, you know, it's grown into a decent Premier League team, which everyone's very, very proud of. You've got a lot of local people here working for the football club, and, you know, you can feel that closeness, and it helps bring everyone together. Thank you. Thank you. West Brom residents find solace and solidarity in their cultural heritage. And as a founding member of the Football League, the club has a long and proud history, echoed throughout the hallways of the Hawthorns. You have to respect where we came from, what we've done, what we've achieved. Early on, it was very much a local team. I think it was the FA Cup that kind of took the game to a national stage. Everybody's got their own favourite player, I think, over the years, but Tony Brown owns all our records. He's played more games than anyone else, scored more goals than anyone else, won a couple of cup finals. Yeah, he's the only one that, that we gave a statue to, so I guess he must be the greatest of all time. The team that we have at the moment is probably the best team that we've had in 30 years. They've done a job, I think, that's a bit overlooked, a bit underestimated. But I think being established in the Premier League, being in the top half, not having any sort of relegation worries, that's a massive thing for a club of our size. In a standard week, the intensity of Monday and Tuesday's training warrants Wednesday off. And when the squad returns on Thursday, the analysis is put into practice. What we do on a Thursday is probably work on the attacking shape and then Friday the defensive shape of the team working towards Saturday. We think that maybe Palace may come and create a low block, try and nullify us and defend because at the Hawthorns we've been very, very good this season. And if they do do that, how, where and when can we exploit those areas? Then if you can paint pictures to the boys now, it gives them that ideas and it replicates it for the situation that may occur on, a, on Saturday. At West Brom, the fans are the club's heartbeat. So meeting with the supporters club is a welcome task for Albion's new CEO. 
and I'm very pleased to welcome the new Chief Executive of West Bromwich Albion, Martin Goodman. For me, it's a great opportunity to meet the fans and listen to their, their concerns and find out what the issues are. We are only as good as our fan base. They've been around since 1878 and um, they'll be there long after I've gone. Friday morning is when the first team's jerseys are pressed, prepared and organised for the upcoming match. Got to replace the jerseys that the players would have used the previous week. Like players can either give them to charity, throw them into the crowd, swap them with opposition players. You just got to make sure you get the right sizes. On a Monday we'd come in, we'd get them washed, they'd come back. Whichever ones are missing, we'd send to the secretary to jail and jail would invoice the club and then the club would invoice the players. The players would get, I think it's 50 quid they get charged per shirt. Get these guys here. Get these guys here. This is what I have to put up with. Anything for a laugh. We'll also have a bag on the bench with blood jerseys because the rule states that if somebody gets injured with blood on the jersey, the first jersey that has to go on them has to be an absolute replica of what they have, name and number. For the head coach, the media demands never end. Tony Pulis spends his Friday mornings in the pre-match press conference. Stinks of bacon in here. It is a, a former club of yours, considering everything that's happened since. Is this a game that you really want to win? I had a great eight months at or ten months at Palace, and, and you know the supporters were absolutely fantastic to me. And those games, especially at the back end of the season, where we got uh, we got the points to stay up, it was a magnificent season on the football pitch. While the head coach faces the media, his players are busy gearing up for tomorrow's match. Basically, we get sent two pairs of boots every two or three months until they change the colours of them. Gloves are a different story. Gloves are every game. I wear a new pair on a Thursday or Friday, kind of break them in for the, um, the game on the Saturday, wear them on Saturday, then normally give them away or something, or wear them in training sort of thing. Last week, it was the forceful winds of Doris. Today, it's the bucketing West Midlands sky. Perhaps the pouring rain will help break in those new gloves. It's horrible like this because we do a bit of goalkeeping for about 20 minutes, get cold and wet, and then have to stand around and do shape. So um, now it's the way it is on a Friday. You kind of you know that it's going to just be sort of stop start, getting ready for uh, for whoever we're playing tomorrow. Last week we just had a bit of a, a problem with delivery. I think a package went missing somewhere along the line, and um, I, I you know I like to wear my gloves on a Thursday or a Friday, kind of break them in for the game. But my gloves hadn't arrived, so I've had to wear a pair of boas. People found out it during the game, and, and that was it. It kind of went from there, really. It's Lee Smoose, and Ben Foster comes out with a big, big save. In it comes towards the penalty area. It's flicked on, a brilliant save from Ben Foster. He's half size smaller than me as well, but um, nah, they were golden, to be fair. They, it, you know, it worked out in the end. Cheers, lads. Get inside, it's horrible. <laughs> It's match day at the Hawthorns, and since football is a creatures of habit, there's a systematic approach to the dressing room setup. The problem is we only have 18 lockers. And like today, there's a squad of 22, so we've got to try and gamble what 18 we think are in the squad, which sometimes is like picking your lottery numbers, you know? We've got Matty Phillips normally sits where Dawson sits, but of course, Matty's out injured, and Dawson's reasonable. He can sort of like fit in wherever he's not too fuss. There is actually one player that always has a brand new pair of boots that he puts in for the match, and that's Bowers, my hill. Even though he's on the bench, he still puts a brand new pair in. But they're all pretty reasonable with their boots. You sort of know what boots they're going to put in for the game. You know, players are superstitious too, so it's... At the end of the day, they have to be 100% happy in what they have. After the break, it's kick-off at the Hawthorns. I stand before kickoff and I just try and reflect on people who've sacrificed a lot for me to be in the position I'm in and not to let them down. A very warm welcome to the Hawthorns in the West Midlands from Gary Taphouse and Don Goodman. Hosts West Bromwich Albion are gunning for a fifth home win in a row. The Hawthorns offers an assortment of services for its fans. One of them is Albion Radio, which blind fan Dave Healy listens to at every home match. 
I've got a little radio in my pocket and I tune into uh, Albion Radio. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Albion Radio. It's nice that we're able to help people out who, you know, may have difficulty in viewing the game. And it's just nice to be able to give something back to Dave because he's a, he's a wonderful man and he's got a good sense of humour as well. I mean, Gareth McCauley scored a goal here a couple of weeks ago. Goal line technology was needed and we got a text in five minutes later from Dave saying he was definitely in. I could see it from where I was from. So, of course, the irony in that is fantastic, so it's great. A special guest at today's match is Dylan Rose donning the latest Ben Foster hairstyle as he prepares today's match ball. Yeah, you've done a brilliant job. Well done. Well done. During today's warm-up, players sport T-shirts promoting the Kick It Out campaign, an organisation created to challenge racism and encourage inclusive practices in football. Racial equality has long been a focus at West Brom. In the late 1970s, they became England's first top-flight club to regularly field three black players. Dubbed the three degrees by then-manager Ron Atkinson, Laurie Cunningham, Brendan Batson and Cyril Regis earned their nickname after posing in a picture with the American female vocal group of the same name. That team was fabulous to play in and we weren't there thinking we're going to break down barriers. When the second and third generation talk about their journey and they said, well, watching them on the television, they inspired me. It's only then you realise you're inspiring the next generation. Back in the tunnel, the head coach's pre-match routine is in full swing, and for the second straight match, he faces a former employer. Pulis was appointed Crystal Palace manager in November 2013 and guided the club out of the relegation zone and into an 11th place finish, earning the Premier League Manager of the Year award. Tony, I imagine you're looking to build on the, the recent home form today. Yeah, it's a different game and you know they'll cause different problems for us but um, the most important thing is that we make sure we're at it again and they've got a team that you know if we take this anything but in the right manner today we'll get beat. What I like about West Bromwich Albion and Tony Punis is that they are now looking to develop this football club and take it to the next level. It's an easier role being captain when you're winning. You know, we've got a very good close-knit tight group, so I'll, I'll lead by example. That five or six minutes when we come in from the warm-up, that's really when I just use my voice to make sure everyone's on their toes and ready to start the game right. Craig, just how difficult was it? Because Crystal Palace showed a lot of desire today, didn't they? Yeah, they made it hard for us. Um, we, just, we just had a, we had a few chances which we couldn't take. Um, we're, doing, we're doing well, so we've got to keep it going and hopefully bounce back. Despite the frustrations of a home loss, the fans always come first. Chris Brunt, Johnny Evans and Gareth McCauley happily sign autographs for a group of young supporters following the match. Tony, is it possible that the players get to 40 points and they just switch off a little bit because they've got that to that target? Well, they, they, there's complacency, you know, that's the worst word, the most annoying word in the dictionary for me. And, you know, the week has been a good week, they've trained well, they've worked hard, but it just wasn't our day. And, um, you know, the important thing is, is that, uh, you know, the players understand they really, really have to be up for it for every game in this league. 